different colors from uh, oranges and pinks and greens and blues and mauves, all mixed at about the same value, though, the same lightness. And what I'm doing is painting different um, pathways of these colors, these big sweeping curves that come from the outside in towards the sun. Um, and starting with the kind of darker, cooler colors of the outside of the painting, um, and those curves get kind of narrower and narrower as we get in towards the sun. And then doing the opposite, coming away from the sun, painting with the lightest, warmest colors out towards um, those cooler um, areas. And what that does is provides like an overall gradation as, as you move in closer to the sun, everything gets lighter and warmer. Uh, and that just really, really helps the glow. All of these various um, big curves of different colors, again, they just encourage your eye to move. Hello and welcome back to the show. So this is episode 19 of Becoming a Successful Artist with me, Tim Packer. Uh, we're coming to you live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And today I'm going to be introducing you to the artwork of a few friends of mine. Um, one of the great joys of, of my career of being a professional artist is the fact that I've got to meet so many great artists and actually become friends with them. Uh, and I also, the reason I want to, I want to inject this as kind of part of the, um, the, the type of content that I'm going to be doing is that, you know, when we think about contemporary art, if you look up the definition of contemporary art, it says basically all, all art since World War II up until the present. But if you were to Google contemporary art, pretty much all you would get is postmodernist uh, art. And there are, there have been, and there are a ton of artists that have mastered the classical art techniques that have very, very successful careers out there. And that's one of the things that I want to bring, bring to you is the idea that yes, there are many, many artists out there employing what we consider classical art skills and creating very good livings uh, for themselves. So today I'm going to introduce you to three of them whose work I love and who are also good friends of mine. And I'll tell you a little bit of a story about each of them and how I came to meet them. So if this is your first time watching, I'm Tim Packer. Uh, the whole purpose of me doing this video series is that I have had a very, very successful career as an artist, and it's allowed me to live a life kind of beyond my wildest dreams. And what I'd like to do now over the next few years is kind of share everything that I've learned with other aspiring artists. So hopefully that you can achieve your dreams as well. So we're coming to you live. Um, you can let us know where you're watching from. And for those of you that are watching a, a replay on YouTube, welcome. Okay, so um, just a couple things too. Like, if you can let me know where you're watching from in the uh, in the chat box, and uh, just like to know where people are watching from, and I. I'm, I'm already amazed that we're getting people from all over the world uh, watching these. Hi, Sherry. Welcome back. Uh, Lynn, welcome from uh, Lindsay. We got kind of uh, Southern Ontario covered here so far. Uh, Williamsport, Maryland. Welcome, Greg. Hello again, Constantinos from uh, Athens. I, actually, I'm going to an answer a question that you asked yesterday just before we get going. Um, and is that it, Cameron, for now? We're... Uh, from Seattle, morning, Leo. Hi, Eileen from Vancouver. Hi, Rex from Port Hope. I know Rex, we've met before. Um, so I just want to address a question that, uh, hi, Monica, how are you? Constant, I think it was Constantinos asked yesterday about um, that That with, with successful artists now about that, you know, it seemed to be more about kind of, you know, kind of being kind of unique and off the wall than skills. But he also mentioned also education. Uh, and, and I just want to say something about education that art education can be a really, really good thing if it teaches you the fundamentals. But an art education where it's all just about talking about art and if it's all focused on postmodernism, that's likely not going to help you. I've never been asked by a gallery owner, by a potential collector or whatever, what my art education is. So being an artist is kind of like being a hockey player. Um, nobody 
nobody cares what your education is. They just care how well can you play hockey? Uh, how well can you skate? How well can you shoot, stick handle, all that stuff? And the same thing comes in with an art education. It can be a huge, huge asset to you if that education actually teaches you the traditional skills and teaches you composition, things like that. But just having a BA um, that, or an MFA, um, that's not going to help you at all in terms of making a gallery want to care, cover, carry your work or someone want to buy your work. Um, it all just comes down to what can you put on the paper or the canvas. So I just wanted to, to kind of address that. Hi, Ruth. How are you? And I also I also want to mention I'm actually waiting for a call from my doctor. So I, I it's nothing serious. I just have to renew my prescription for my thyroid medication, but it runs out tomorrow. So I need to take that call. So if the phone rings during this broadcast, I'm going to take that call. But then Cameron's got a, a 60 second uh, time lapse of me doing a painting standing by. So if the phone rings, I'm going to bow out uh, for 30 or 40 seconds and just get my uh, prescription confirmed. Okay. So my friends who are great artists. So the person whose work we see right now and the person you see up in the top right corner is a fellow by the name of Peter Rotter. Uh, and Cameron, maybe you can just take me out of it for a couple seconds and let people just see all of his work for about 10 seconds. I just, and I, I have to tell you, I just love, love, love Peter Rotter's work. Now, all of the artists that I'm going to show you today, we all have the one thing in common that we're all landscape painters, but each one is very, very different. Um, but I first became aware of Peter Rotter about 20 years ago. And this was at the time when I was where a lot of you are. I was struggling to try and make it as an artist. I had a pretty good skill set. Uh, I still hadn't really developed my style, but I had no idea how to go about selling my work. I was mainly just going through word of mouth. I'd managed to get myself in a couple galleries, but wasn't none of them actually had any sales. And, and I was at the time though, I was on the board of the Canadian uh, Watercolor Society. And one of my friends, Marilyn Mercer, who I've talked about before, she was actually, she would do the festival circuit, all the different art festivals that are around. And I, I didn't even know art festivals really were a thing. But one week she called me uh, and she said, Tim, you got to start doing festivals. She said, I think your work would do really well there. She said, there's this young whippersnapper who was beside me at my booth today. And he did like $20,000 in sales in the weekend. Uh, and his works are they're, they're beautiful landscapes, but like their traditional kind of work shows a lot of skill. And she said, I think you need to get yourself out there in that whole festival circuit and and at that time there was peter was starting actually to become well known because of the fact that like he, he did a number of festivals that's mainly that's all that he did for the first few years of his his career was sell at festivals and every every festival he went to he would basically sell out and and i it was funny because a lot of other artists um that i knew they didn't want to believe that he was doing that well. And they actually said, oh, I think he's, you know, he's putting red dots up just to make it look like he's selling. Um, but they, they just couldn't believe that this guy could go and festival after festival after festival literally sell out. And I wanted to believe it because it's like, I at least want to know somebody is doing that well, because if he can do it, then potentially I could do it. So I actually went to, there was a, used to be a big indoor art festival, the Toronto Art Expo, that was probably one of the best shows um, in Southern Ontario, and, but it was very expensive to do. And I was thinking about doing it, but I wanted to just see, first of all, like, would it be worth it? And I wanted to see this Peter Rotter guy and see if he was actually selling as much as what, as what it looked like. Um, and so I went down there in 2004, went to the show, walked around, and then I found Peter Rotter's booth and I stood about, you know, about 50 or 60 feet away and just kind of watched what was going on. And within a 10 minute period, I saw three people come up and buy paintings. Uh, and so I realized, okay, yeah, it's true. This guy really is selling that much and his works were going for very good prices as well. Um, and that's what actually convinced me 
to do the Toronto Art Expo the next year. I was doing a lot of the smaller art festivals, but none of the real big ones. And I certainly um, wouldn't have felt confident in 2004 doing the big Toronto Art Expo. But over the course of that summer, my voice started to finally come out, the work that you guys know me for now. And I decided I was gonna do the Toronto Art Expo. And that was the first time I really exhibited uh, a, a big group of my work with that that was kind of the start of my current style. And that weekend changed my life. I did $28,000 in sales uh, over the course of the four days. Uh, and that really just launched my career. Um, but then what I did um, is I wanted to go say hi to this guy, Peter Rotter. I wanted to meet him and I wanted to tell him that how his success had actually kind of given me the courage to kind of, well, first of all, to start going out on the festival circuit, which that is where my career kind of really started to pick up steam and then ultimately doing the Toronto Art Expo. So anyways, I went up and I introduced myself to him uh, and I just told him the story and told him that I'd done the show this year and it was really good. And he said, oh, like, well, well, how have you done? And I told him, I said, I'm at like twenty eight thousand dollars in sales. And, and what killed me was the reaction. He just gave me a high five. And he said, wow, that's great. Um, and that's the other thing that I want to get across today, too, is that, you know, most artists that are out there are very, very generous and they want to see other artists succeed and they want to help other artists succeed. And that's not typical of the, you know, the stereotypical delicate genius who's so protective of their little domain and all of that kind of stuff. Now, you may find artists out there who are like that. But what I can tell you is they're the exception. And there's so many really nice people out there that you don't need to suffer those people who are the, pre the pretentious uh, prima donnas. And Peter was certainly very, very generous. Um, for me, this guy, he didn't know coming up and talking to him. Now, I actually got to know Peter fairly well over the course of the next few years because I started doing a lot of festivals and we were there together. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? Um, and... And I was actually able to kind of return the favor a number of years later. It was probably about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Because at that time, again, Peter was pretty much just doing art festivals and he would do his own open studio and he would sell pretty much like, again, everything that he painted. But at a certain point, you know, he got tired of doing the festival circuit because it's a lot of work, like packing all your stuff up, setting up your booth. You've got to be there the whole weekend. So we were talking at, uh, I think it was at the McMichael show that that was the only show that I was doing at the time. And I was pretty much exclusively selling in galleries. And um, Peter mentioned that, oh, you know what? I'm kind of getting getting a little bit tired of, of the, he called it the art carny game. Um, he said, yeah, I'm an art carnival guy uh and he said I'm, i think i might be interested in in maybe showing in some galleries and and i just immediately said well listen i'm in a, a bunch of really good ones i'd be happy to make an intro uh and i did and so i i actually reached out to three or four of my top galleries and just said to them listen there's this guy and you've probably heard of him but he's looking at moving into galleries now um and like would you be interested and and i know that at least three of them kind of jumped at that and that helped him kind of seamlessly move into selling from galleries and that and for those of you that are looking to get into galleries that is one of the best ways to get in is if a gallery um, if an artist is a very, very, very good seller at a gallery, and at that time I was one of the top sellers or the top seller at the galleries I was in. So my recommendation actually carried a lot of weight. And even for if they didn't know him, it's like, OK, well, I think we're going to listen to Tim, take a look at this guy's work and and actually start showing him. Uh, and so and now, Peter, I believe he just this year opened his own gallery up in Lakefields, Ontario. But again, brilliant, brilliant painter. Um, and yeah, just a really nice guy. Okay, we're going to switch to the next one, who is Dominic Modlinski. And Cameron's going to change the background here. And I need to go on and change my virtual background. Okay, we've got that switched around. So um, yeah, this it's amazing what you can do just uh, just in your basement with the computer with this amazing uh, software. Um, but 
so Dominic Modlinski, Dominic's actually a he's um, you know watched the show a number of times and uh, he's commented a bunch of times, and yeah, just a, another brilliant, brilliant. He, he's here today too. Lansky. Oh, Dominic's here today apparently. Yeah. So hi, Dominic. How are you? He, he didn't know, by the way, that I was going to be doing this, um, and so if I get anything wrong with this, Dominic, you can you can kind of comment comment in. Um, but I first, so let me first, I'll tell you how I met Dominic. I first met Dominic. It's, it's gotta be 20 years ago. And I don't even know if he remembers it, but I had just recently been elected as a member of the Canadian society of painters in watercolor. And we were holding a symposium in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, and we had a few members there who were instructing or giving little talks. And I, and Dominic came and he gave a, he gave a talk, um, and it was about his experiences out in um, British Columbia or the Yukon. And we're going to get into it in a minute. But like Dominic is, for, for those of you who are Canadians and know Tom Thompson and kind of that whole kind of lore of Tom Thompson being kind of the rugged kind of backwoodsman who go, would go and hike and canoe and then paint like in the midst of the wilderness. That's Dominic. Um, and he gave a talk about that. Uh <laughs> and another friend of mine, David McEwen, who I'll show you his work at another point. Uh, but but uh, okay, let me just let me just give you a little story about David and Dominic. So David McEwen, I think, is um, one of Canada's um, top watercolor landscape painters. But I used to just sit there and listen to these two talk. They're both buddies, and they're both kind of that whole like Tom Thompson got nothing on them. But they would tell stories about, you know, being out and camping on the glacier. So sleeping overnight in a tent on the glacier um, and getting up in the morning and painting. Um, but painting out in grizzly country where they would have to find a place where there was a good scene over here and a good scene over here. And they would paint back to back, uh, set up back to back in case so that they couldn't get snuck up on by grizzlies. And they would have a rifle with them as well in case they had to fire a shot to scare a bear off. Um, and so it's like, yeah, um, Dominic is kind of like the, the real deal when it comes to not just painting the outdoors, but really living in it. Um, and Dominic, I believe too, he, when he first, so Dominic studied art in Poland and he, he got the benefit of a very good classical education, um, in Poland where they were still teaching the traditional stuff. And then when he came here, he went to Ontario College of Art. And I believe, Dominic, didn't, weren't you one of the founders in the Algoma School of Arts? I know he lived for a few years up in the uh, Lake Superior Park area up in Algoma um, and was part of that school there. Uh, and then a number of years ago, he moved out to the West Coast. And I believe he has a place in Vancouver. Uh, but he also has a cabin in Atlin, BC, which is like rugged, rugged, rugged. Um, outdoor kind of the, the scenes that you kind of see behind me and Dominic also. So again, you just look at his work, brilliant, brilliant use of color. Um, when I talk an awful lot about again, like, you know, like composition, the way in which we organize the colors, values and shapes, it's just like, look at every painting of his. Yeah. So Dominic lived up there at the Algoma School of Landscape Arts with David McEwen. And that's another artist. Again, that's the guy I'll tell you about. But um, if you look at Dominic's work, it's like the, the, the compositions are breathtaking. The use of color is breathtaking and it's applied with that mastery of skill. And it's a unique voice. Like it, once you know Dominic's work, as soon as you see one of Dominic's pieces, you know who it is. And so that's 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 just a great example of what I say. Like, how do you become a successful artist? Well, you master the skills, you master composition, and you create great works of art with a unique voice. And Dominic, uh, I know he sells in a number of galleries uh, kind of across Canada, um, a lot of very, very prestigious galleries. And he also teaches too. That's the other thing I want to mention. I know, uh, obviously, if you're watching the show, you want to learn. And I, and again, it's like, yeah, learn as much as you can for me. And if you want to take my courses, fine. But I also think that one of my jobs is going to be for those that I believe are really good instructors to kind of pass that along to you too. And so I know Dominic right now, he's, he's teaching, I think, online. He might have a couple in person courses scheduled, but who knows with what's going on. 
Um, and there's also a number of videos um, that Dominic has made too. If you go to his website, which is well, just Google Dominic Modlinski, M-O-D-L-I-N-S-K-I. I think it's paintingjourneys.com. Um, but just Google Dominic, and he's got some great videos of some of his trips. So you can actually kind of, you know, vicariously follow along, um, again, living that life of being like right in the midst of it. Uh, yeah, so he's got a color contrast thing. So again, you know me, I'm a color junkie uh, and I love other artists who master color. And and, and actually, yeah, there's Dominic's uh, website. It's you might think that it's easy working with brilliant, intense colors. It's really, really hard to work with brilliant, intense colors and not have it just be too jarring or to or to have a total lack of unity. So the ability to work with really bright, intense colors um, and yet have it all work is, um, again, that's a huge skill. And I think that, that there's a huge appeal out there that... Um, Again, there are some great painters out there who paint in kind of much more muted uh, colors. But I know for me that like one of the things that people really say is they love my use of color, bright, intense color. So, um, yeah, Dominic's got a workshop coming up dealing specifically with that. So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Good for you, Len. Um, and you'll have to let me know on the on our artists, uh, the Hungry Artists uh, community. Um, after you take it, how it went, but I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. And also Dominic's a master of brushwork. I talk about how it's much better to suggest something with one or two strokes than rendering it with 30 little strokes. Um, you can also just, just from looking at his paintings, you can learn an awful lot about what you should be working towards. Okay. And that's it for Dominic. Um, and I also have to say too, Dominic and I, we knew, we know each other more through David McEwen, but actually just in the past year, We've actually kind of rekindled the friendship because we've been talking an awful lot about um, just this whole idea of with COVID and how it's drastically changed the traditional kind of models that we've been on a few Zoom calls ourselves, just the two of us kind of discussing ideas and strategies about, first of all, how we can look at this as an opportunity uh, and actually take advantage of everything that this the fact that the whole world now is comfortable with being virtual, it opens up a lot of opportunities. So we've already had a few discussions and I know we, we talked that we're going to get together sometime in the next week and just, again, just kind of spitball with each other about things that are working and ideas and stuff like that. Okay. Enough said about Dominic, but yeah, highly recommend. First of all, love his work and recommend his workshops. So the next person that we're going to go to is Wendy Birmingham. And let me go and change my background here. Okay, so I'll give you a few secs to look at Wendy's work. And Wendy's also a very good friend of mine now, but we haven't known each other that long. Um, the way that I met Wendy is actually kind of funny because those of you who know the story of Brooke, you know that I got to know her because her dad is a member at Whiteville Golf Club where Diane and I are members. And I actually got to know Wendy because her husband Tom is a member at Whiteville Golf Club. So I first met Wendy about seven, I think it was about seven or eight years ago. And we were having our, our clubhouse was actually being torn down and they were building a new clubhouse the next season. And we were having the big end, basically end of season kind of dinner dance, but it was also going to be the last kind of hurrah of our old clubhouse. And one of my one of my friends that actually convinced me to join, he asked me if I'd be interested in joining their table, if Diane and I would join them. And, and I said, yeah, so we joined with them. And then he told me, he said, oh, well, Tom Birmingham's going to be with, with us as well at the table and his wife, Wendy. And he said, like, she's kind of just getting back into getting serious about her art. And so he said, like, she's really excited to, you know, to talk to you. And would you be OK with her kind of picking your brains like in the evening about kind of the business of being an artist? And I said, yeah, sure. That I'm always happy to do that. So I met Wendy for the first time that night and we literally probably for two hours kind of talked and talked about art. 
And Wendy at that point was where I think a lot of the people that are in my audience are right now. Like, so she had actually a background. She'd studied art at Ontario College of Art. And she worked a number of years as a graphic designer, but she'd never really pursued like fine art or painting. And she was just starting to get into doing that. And she had been doing it maybe for a year or so. Um, but again, and her works were good. You know, they were nice works and they showed some skill and all that. But they they weren't anything that that kind of where you'd go, oh, my God, this this woman is going to be, a, you know, an absolute success. And now she's at, let me just say now she's actually one of my favorite painters and she's probably one of the best uh best plein air painters that I know, like her ability to go on site and just paint little, little sketches. She's absolutely brilliant. I agree, Ruth. Like, and if you guys haven't followed her in, if you don't follow her Instagram, I'd really recommend it because she's in that mode right now where she's in her studio every day painting. Uh, and yeah. So anyways, we talked that night and, and I said to her, well, I think what you should do at the time I was a member of a group called the East Central Ontario Art Association. And that was a group where we just got together and painted. Um, people would host paint outs, but we would also host these weekend retreats where, you know, you might take a workshop, but you might just go and paint. And, and there was no kind of um, bar to entry. So you didn't have to be jury dinner or anything. You just had to pay your money and show up and paint. And, and at that time, I was just starting to actually get active and going to the paint, the paint, paint outs because it was just nice to get out with other artists. So I said to her, I think you should join this group. And so she did. And then we went um, on a number of these um, paint out weekends together. Um, and then I, and we would drive together. So I, I know some of you have heard me talk about when when I was first on the board of the Watercolor Society and I look forward to those drives um, with Neville Clark because he was where I wanted to be. Um, well, those drives up to the different paint locations, I, th I felt kind of like, oh, it's kind of like the rules. Now I'm kind of like Neville because we would be talking a lot and and Wendy would be, you know, asking me advice and I'd be giving her advice. Um, and she, she just, gra she just very quickly when she kind of, kind of dug deep into her art, she got fairly much better, fairly quickly. Uh, and then there was the thing that, that she says was a huge turning point in her career it was about four years ago. I think it was four years ago. Um, I was going up to Batchewana Bay uh, where I have a friend of mine who kind of who hosts me up there. It used to be almost every year before COVID hit. And I would go up and stay there for a week and hike through the Algoma region and paint. And often I would I would bring other artists, friends, too. So there was a weekend we were having up there with and Norman Brown was coming along, too. And Norman's a contemporary of mine. I again, I'd consider him one of my peers. And he's also had a very successful career for for over 20, 30 years. Uh, and we were going up there and I, I asked Wendy, I said, would because she'd heard me talk about the, the, this, you know, magnificent landscape up there. Uh, and I was, again, just really impressed with her determination and that, you know, she just wanted this so bad. And I asked her, I said, do you want to, do you want to come up with Norm and I and, and Sean? And it's like, yeah, we'll hike the trails, we'll paint, we'll do all that. And so she did. And so she came up with us for, I think we were there for about five days. And actually my son Cameron was there too, because that was when we were getting him to do, I wanted him to do some filming uh, up there. And Wendy to this day says that five days changed her life. Uh, and I think partly it was because like the landscape up there is just so magnificent that it, it really, you really do just feel one with nature more than anywhere else. Well, I haven't been out where Dominic paints and I'm sure it's the same sort of deal, but I think more than anything, what happened is she had a change in mindset that, you know, for five days, she hung out with, with me and Norm and we'd all paint during the day and we'd sit around, drink wine at night and we'd talk art um, and also talk, talk about her art and, and both Norm and I basically, you know, saying to her that weekend, like by that time, it's like, you know what, you're as good as us. Like, like whatever you want out of life as an artist, like it's all there for the taking uh, for you. And I think for the first time over the course of that weekend, she really, really bought into the fact 
that, yeah, you know what? I can do this. And here I am hanging out with, with two guys who, who are very successful artists and I can hang with them. Um, and, uh, and they think I, I can hang with them. And it's like, I need to believe that, that I can do this. Um, and now like, if you look at, again, she, she's one of my favorite painters, uh, and her voice has kind of come together too over, over that period of time. And, and now she's she, initially, she was doing a lot of paintings from up uh, in Lake Superior Park. And now she's kind of changed her subject matter. There's a lot, a lot of the florals, um, a lot to do with, with foliage, but her, same thing, her use of color, her, her brushwork uh, is, is absolutely brilliant. And she's now again, off to the races. She's, she's carried by a number of prestigious galleries across Canada and yeah, just, just living the life. And that's part of the thing. That's one of the main reasons why I want to do occasionally these kind of things with you is first of all, to introduce you to artists that I think you should be looking at their work and you can learn from that, but also to just, again, let you know that like, yeah, there's a ton of artists out there right now that are, creating fabulous careers with the use of traditional skills and creating traditional art that we would consider, again, mastery of composition, mastery of skills and creating beautiful work, not work that's ugly, um, which again, if you just Google contemporary art, you won't find any of these three artists in there or the hundreds of other artists or thousands that are actually doing this. You will only find the kind of the most shocking stuff out there. So those are three of my buddies. I actually have, again, with this series of friends of mine who are great artists, there's probably about 15 or 16 uh, artists who, who are friends of mine who, who are great artists. And so every once in a while, I'll do one of these. And also every once in a while, I'm going to do one with great artists who I don't know, but who I just like their work just makes me drool. Um, and I, I think, yeah, you can think of me as kind of a curator of who I think are great artists and also artists who have great careers going um, and artists who, who teach. Now, Peter doesn't teach and Wendy doesn't teach. I keep bugging her that she should start teaching, um, but she's she's right now just enjoying being in her studio and and painting every day. So those are those are my three buddies for now. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about making a plan. Uh, this is a perfect time to do this. Uh, I don't like making, I think I talked to this, talked about this, or I don't like making plans like on New Year's, like right on New Year's uh, because it's so busy and everybody kind of forgets. I like kind of a, a week or two after New Year's. It's like, okay, you've settled back into normal life. Now it's time to take stock and think about what are the things I'd like to achieve in the next year, in the next three years, in the next five years, and what do I need to do to do that. And I have done that every year for the last 22 years. And, and it, it really, really helps to have a focus about what is it you were trying to achieve this year. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. And just uh, again, final mention that, yeah, that this week is going to be the last of my daily shows. Uh, starting next week, it's going to be once a week on Wednesdays at 12.05. Uh, and that's partly because I'm going to be going on vacation, hopefully, as long as the border stays open. I'm going to be down in Florida for a couple of weeks and then Hilton Head a couple of weeks. And then when I get back in February, I'll kind of revisit how often I'm going to be doing the live broadcasts. Um, but it's, it's probably not going to be every day. As I mentioned yesterday, um, kind of gearing myself up to do a live broadcast every day is... Uh, it's a lot. I've really enjoyed it, but I don't think I could carry this on uh, going forward for the whole year, but I'll definitely be doing at least weekly and maybe twice a week. So I guess that is a good time to end this and I will see you tomorrow.